So welcome everyone. Uh, we're going to be talking about how to break out of the puzzle niche, but first presentations. You. Uh, so hi, I'm Lena Fee. I'm the game designer programmer uh, at Benstack. I also do level design, shadow art, writing and marketing because of course I do. <laughs> I'm also a part-time teacher and streamer. Uh, we released Packred Down the Bun Burrows last August. And finally, as you may have noticed, I'm aggressively French. I'm sorry for the accent. <laughs> so about Bun Burrows, uh, it's a bunny catching, pathfinding based puzzle game. Uh, it has lots of what we call meta bun play, more on that later. Uh, it was made by a team of three uh, as a side project in two years. Uh, we made decent sales for a puzzle game on Steam, and the game was received with over 600, almost 700 right now, uh, overwhelmingly positive reviews. Uh, the game is also available on GOG and Epic Game Store. Uh, we don't have much time, so here is a sped up version of the trailer, so we get the idea behind the game. Basically, uh, bunnies are running away from you, uh, they have priorities on which direction they pick relative to you. Uh, the game has different tools to negotiate um, those spice finding rules, such as traps, pickaxes and carrots. Uh, it's all about finding ways to exploit uh, the bunny's solid and consistent uh, handcrafted AI. You later realize the game's worlds are adjacent to one another and they can be explored by using the pickaxe on the side of the levels. And that's only one of the many hidden meta shenanigans uh, happening. So why are we here? As you may already know from marketing research, such as Chris Zukowski's, uh, Puzzle is a crowded genre, highly appreciated by indie game developers, particularly inexperienced ones. While remaining one of the least popular genre among players on Steam, this bar with that oh-so-low median earning, uh, that's us. First important point, we start with a handicap compared to other genres. However, this may be worrying, but I still take the stat with a little grain of salt, because Puzzle also includes all of those many, many terrible hentai puzzle games. So why the hate on puzzle games? The genre as we're known for difficulty is both a boon and a curse. Uh, it's an important criteria for your core audience, but it also acts as a deterrent for basically anyone else. Uh, that's the reason why content creators generally avoid puzzle games. Uh, however, the exceptions are pretty interesting. Um, very few of them are specialized in this niche, so getting their attention and bringing your game to the whole niche is already a challenge, and getting the game outside the niche is even harder. So what now? As I said earlier, uh, Puzzle is a genre particularly appreciated by young game designers that also happen to be programmers. And that's the biggest math nerds that you can find in the, in the industry. And let me tell you, we're going to keep making these puzzle games anyway, no matter what big marketing tells us. And that's where this talk comes in. How do we make these games profitable? We're going to be covering a wide range of techniques and design choices that will help you during your early conception phase, um, coupled with marketing perspective, uh, useful when picking mechanics, theme, etc. If your game is already in production, I'm afraid you won't be able to apply that knowledge that put it into good use uh, until your next game. However, maybe the meta chapter will give you some ideas. Um, there are some tips we did apply to Bunburrows some only partially, uh, and some we didn't at all because game dev happened. Uh, but sometimes uh, solutions came, us, came to us too late in production, or we either lacked time or the money to actually go ahead with some of these. It's fine. So aesthetics. Nobody wants to play a soccer bond looking game. At least we didn't. So we branded our game as an adventure game as much as possible with a solid artistic direction, sound design and writing. And because game mechanics just aren't enough, um, no matter how clever, uh, we thought of being a puzzle game as something that we had to compensate for. Uh, we shined among other 2D puzzlers from 2023, but we still couldn't compete with games like Viewfinder, Cocoon and Talos Principle 2. Because apart from some very specific exceptions we'll get into later, um, puzzle games that perform the best look like this. Uh, they are also 
gorgeous visually with highly recognizable artistic directions. Obviously, many other factors are at play here for these game successes, like publishers, PR, are already being established in the industry. But you can still note the general trend of the games that do get signed or work well, amazingly, as in these. The same applies to 2D puzzle games. And yes, I know about a small indie puzzle game called Baba Is You, but it's not, it's a special case uh, for later. And you may think uh, having a decent artistic direction is a no brainer, but it really isn't that obvious in the puzzle game niche. If you don't take my word, take Alien's Rocks. He's one of the most, if not the most, uh, influential content creator with a puzzle focus. Uh, and he included this segment in one of his videos. In our defense, understand has like no art. Yeah, it's minimalist, but it doesn't fucking have to be. Speaking of, Devin's actually looking for more work in the game art industry. I know that there's a lot of interesting puzzle games out there that have no effort whatsoever put into like having even an immersive art style. Honestly, the waste of potential pisses me off. It does. I hide it well, but it does. Puzzle players are tolerating puzzle games rife with programmer art, but you can see that they are craving for more. In our defense, understand has like... Sorry. <laughs> Let's go. Uh, so, as both game designers and marketeers, this should be ringing a bell because there is a clear thing that players are asking for and one way to tap into that crave without having to make like Terra's Principle 3 um, is working on your theme. Uh, Bun Burrows partly got traction because its art style and Gen Z shitpost style humor uh, reminded players of popular retro-looking titles such as Undertale and Omori. And blending genres with already established appreciated art styles from other genres already works. Like you can see the success of games like Brotato among survivors likes. And if it can work for them, it may as well work for us. Uh, you don't have to be cynical about it though, but look outside the puzzle genre for inspiration and please stop the programmery settings. Um, your puzzle game doesn't really need to have yet another testing lab setting. Like this was cool 17 years ago. If, and if those 17 years makes you feel old, uh, not makes me feel like a baby because that's when Portal was released for the first time and I was 10. <laughs> Anyway, this choice mattered. Um, while Ben Burroughs players uh, highly praised uh, the puzzle design, they also won't stop talking about the game's humor, art, and soundtrack. And so think of your game as an RPG. Like if tomorrow you just made an excellent combat system, no matter how important it is for the genre, that will also mean that you forgot to craft like a compelling story. So if you have good mechanics, you can already bet you will get the puzzle demographic. Now it's a matter of convincing basically everyone else um, because good writing, art, and music uh, do go a long way. They act as a bait for more casual players. So let's talk about another major pillar uh, in my design philosophy for puzzle games, uh, meta content. Uh, to explain my point, I will be spoiling The Witness and Ben Burrows, uh, Baba Is You, A Good Snowman's Art to Build, and Canon Formals, Spoilers will also be discussed, be, be, be discussed, uh, but uh, only on the slide. So you can just like close your eyes if you don't. You can just look away if you want. Uh, so, meta content. Uh, so meta content, as in hidden layers of mechanics slash puzzles, um, is what makes a puzzle stand above others. It makes puzzle play games go from yet another puzzle game to that puzzle game. Um, it makes players uh, see the game's puzzles uh, with a new eye and not something that they did once and, that, and are done with forever. Um, it's when what players had discarded as detail or decoration in the first puzzle uh, becomes rele relevant in a deeper part of the game that they had not foreseen. Uh, for example, in The Witness, you start noticing after many hours that uh, the patterns that you got used to drawing on the panels are actually showing up everywhere on the island's 3D environment. And they are interactable, and it's actually a secondary objective to play with perspective to find them all. And so yeah, meta content is when the answer to a cheeky, what if I did X, 
uh, where the player would expect to break the game, uh, actually turns out to be something intended all along uh, that actually ye yields even more content. Um, Metaizos makes your game uh, go from a sequence of puzzles to a more coherent whole uh, that acts as a sandbox for player experimentation. Uh, it's also what makes games like Tokitori 2 Plus go from a puzzle game to a knowledge vania, where the power ups you need to progress is actually just knowledge of pre existing mechanics that have been here all along. Ben Burrows also has a go in this meta frenzy. Uh, Burn Burrows has an intertwined uh, secret mechanics, uh, as intertwined secret mechanics, uh, each bringing their own Eureka moment. Um, in Burn Burrows, you will once in a while uh, get a new one of these. Uh, first, you learn the basic mechanics. The bare minimum is explicitly covered, and the rest is left up to experimentation. Then you realize that you can stack bunnies to make babies. Yes, that's how it works. Um, then you realize that stacks can't enter tunnels, which opens up new ways to approach existing puzzles. Then you realize that you can go to adjacent worlds without going back to the hub map. Uh, and you can even e exchange bunnies that way. Then you realize that you can send bunnies down holes. And all of these are only the first half of these Eureka moments. I could make a whole second slide about these. And the thing is, each secret mechanic comes with new experimentation opportunities and their own unlocks. Uh, um, in Bun Burrows, you get new objectives, quality of life mechanics, the map, secret biomes, hardcore secret levels, just by engaging with that system. And also, embrace your corner cases. Um, when you're making your game, uh, if you find a weird interaction, uh, something that feels off or feels like it could be more, replace it with um, a proper intended interaction. Uh, polish it, refine it, build levels around it, like hiding those corner cases away and preventing them and preventing them through level design. To me, is wasted potential. Like in Bun Burrows, we embraced infinite loops, cases where it felt something special should be happening, and cases where resolution seemed non-deterministic. Working on our epiphanies, like the baby mechanic the trespassing mechanic, uh, hidden levels, etc., did the charm for us. Um, this got our players to annoy all of their friends and favorite influencers about the game. You can't imagine the number of Discord members who first introduced themselves, saying that X other community member couldn't stop buzzing them about how deep the game was and how they couldn't tell them about it. And yeah, tons of reviews emphasize on the feeling of scale, on how great it feels to turn the world into a sandbox ripe for experimentation. And the same word of mouth uh, happened to Void Stranger and its fourth world breaking twists. However, um, your game may be meta, uh, but if your players don't notice it, or too few of them, it's pointless. Uh, players don't care about your game if you are a newcomer in the industry, like they don't know about you. So you have to prove to them very quickly how deeper your game gets. Um, it was even truer for us since our main mechanic itself wasn't compelling enough, which is the case for like the vast majority of puzzle games. Um, so we had to signify early um, how deeper it could get. Uh, we had to tease it. And that thing, um, it acts as a secret handshake for uh, seasoned, seasoned puzzle players and a promise for more casual players. Um, a good example is uh, the bunker puzzle in The Witness. You are fresh out of the tutorial area and you are greeted by a puzzle impossible with your current knowledge. And that teaches the player that the puzzles are necessarily in order and that they are encouraged to stray off the main path. In our case, uh, we introduced the players to with a seemingly uncatchable bunny in the seventh level of the game. That's where what you see at the bottom right corner here. Um, and that way, we worked very early with the players' FOMO and curiosity. Uh, we held their hand through the first hours of the game, but we didn't forget to give them glimpses of the way more exciting destination. And when they got there, we over-delivered. Um, a lot of hidden levels, like almost like a third of the game, um, dozens of hours of gameplay, more free content coming, more secret mechanics, etc., etc. 
and players starve for this kind of stuff. However, the player must stay hooked to your base mechanics until you fulfill the promise. Uh, that means polishing your player controller, adjustable speeds, skippable animations, intertwin undo and reset system, input buffering. All of these are standard in the genre. Um, the same applies, um, the same goes for navigability with skippable puzzles, easy access with teleporting to and from late levels, unless uh, backtracking increases the chance of players stumbling upon your meta mechanics, just like in the witness. Here are some other accessibility tips to keep your player engaged. So keep a rule book. Um, some players will play very short sessions and they don't want to be hassled keeping notes uh, about everything. So make their life easier and offer them in-game ways to record understanding of the game's mechanics, either manually or automatically. Uh, just like, you know, like that, like int map in the, in the um, How to Wilds, that just like, write down everything that you see in the game. Uh, also, avoid mechanics that rely only on sound or color discrimination, or be really upfront about it, because then there is nothing as frustrating to the player as spending time on a puzzle for hours before realizing that it was plain impossible to you. And if there are players of Bimbros listening, I know this is there is one of those in the game, but I'm proud of, I'm proud of it. Uh, last thing, uh, hint systems. I know, as a level designer, you poured all of your heart uh, into making the levels self-explanatory. Uh, you, you were aiming for that particular Eureka moment. Uh, you've been building this up for like a whole world now, but sometimes the puzzle still is, is too hard for the, for the player. Uh, some still need the additional push. And it hurts, it hurts, but you have to do it uh, if you don't want a rage quitter. And kind of Wormholes, her hint system uh, should become the benchmark for your own games, so please try it out. Another thing to keep in mind uh, to keep players engaged um, is that our grid based worlds are suffocating for players uh, because. More casual players are used to higher degrees of freedom uh, of movements in FPS and TPS. So we have to find ways to make them more friendly. This comes with idle animations, relaxing interactions, just like, like you know, like sitting in viewfinder, leaving messages in on Telos Principles walls, things like this. Um, help players forget about how claustrophobic our puzzles are. Um, also, make the failure state fun. Uh, in Bunburrows, when you are stuck, you don't just stare at your screen endlessly. You, you can just, if you want, uh, mindlessly run after the bunny and find pleasure just in that. You can even get ideas that way. And here you see like people like building like on the right, like building like narratives around chasing the bunnies. That's important for later. Because uh, talking about managing failure, um, content creators can't entertain their audience and manage their online persona if they are stuck on your puzzle for an hour. They don't want to look stupid and they want to have new things to share with their audience. Uh, in Bunburrows, you may look stupid being stumped by a puzzle and God does that happen, but the game's very, very premise makes it so this means that you are stupider than a bunny. And this helps the content creator build narratives around that. Some joked about how bunnies were superior creatures, and others joked about how they were going to be cooking the perfect meal after that and catching them. Uh, also, backseating. Some streamers love it, most hate it, and it's bound to happen for a puzzle game. Um, in that case, uh, consider Twitch integrations. Like, if it didn't happen anyway, do things to mitigate that. Um, we didn't have time for both for this on Bunburrows, but we heavily considered it. Uh, we wanted to find um, new ways for streamers to engage with the game, with the puzzles. So we toyed with the idea of uh, an in-game backseating system uh, using the Twitch, uh, Twitch hit maps. Uh, basically, uh, on Twitch, you can just click. Uh, like, if if the game if a game has integration, uh, integration, 
players can click on the screen and that shows up as a heat map on the game. That way you could tell you could tell the streamer where to look at, like where the solution is supposed to be, like in what area and stuff. Also, like naming bunnies after viewers. I don't know, possibilities. Uh, communities, uh, which communities to reach? Um, there are some no-brainers inside the niche, like the Stinky Discord is a server dedicated to this kind of brainy games, and hello, we are on Um It's amazing, but it couldn't sustain our launch just by itself. Um, we found support in other communities. Uh, for example, Bunburrows found su success inside uh, online LGBT communities I was part of. And also part of the Selen speedrun scene somehow, uh, which sprouted a tool assisted speedrun scene immediately after launch. Um, you can find something that works for your game, like an entertainer to go for these specific communities. Um, but like again, it's thanks to the game's theme and vibe and your own personal contribution that makes it that your game is easy to market in some places rather than others. Also, we didn't shadow drop the game. Uh, we made demos and betas. We built a loyal audience. We got regular feedback for, from both puzzle tryharders and more casual players. And almost a year later, uh, our Steam page still has its beefy five to 10 hours uh, of gameplay demo. In conclusion, uh, me mechanics are cool, but do not neglect the rest. Um, work on your epiphanies and meta content. Um, craft a promise with the player. Make the game accessible and engaging in the meantime. And when you get there, over deliver. And finally, uh, build a loving home for your game's community. Don't care about any of these tips? Fine. We could have tried to be the exception. We could have tried to be the new Baba is you, but we'd have needed absolutely stellar mechanics, just like Baba has. Um, even Viewfinder, with a groundbreaking mechanic, chose a highly marketable heart style and consensual storytelling that helped carry the game into a wider, more casual audience. The game showcased its way, its mechanics in a non-challenging way, and I believe it. By doing that, it prevented itself from becoming a darling of the puzzle community. Yet, the game did better than 99% of what we puzzle nerds put out there. So we have a lot to learn up from Viewfinder. So yeah, don't make a cool puzzle game. Make a cool game with puzzles in it. That's it. Uh, questions? Uh, feel free to follow me on the Bird app. I use the same handle everywhere else, but this is why I'm the most active. Thank you so much, Lenafi. That was wonderful. Uh, we did get a few questions in the chat, so I'll sure. try to read them out to you. So Plush Lala was asking, thank you for all the questions today, Plush Lala. They've been great. Uh, Plush Lala was asking, do you think it's still possible to be appealing outside of the puzzle niche, even with a simple art style? And do you think some aesthetics could push general audiences away? I think they um, that they're also talking about just pixel art in, in general. And the thing is, um, I like I do think like some games can get away with like programmer styles, like minimalist type of stuff. Like mm -hmm. you know, like you know, but like the mini series, which is like thinky adjacent, or even games like Baba Is You or um, Patrick's Paradox, because of them how how programmery that their mechanics feel, mm. like the theme reinforce like the game's mechanics. But if you have a game like Bunburrows could have been a game about like pushing blocks, like blocks like flee away from you. But in our case, like the theme of chasing bunnies helped convey the mechanics. So like yeah. Yeah like, that's a great that's a great in some insight. cases it can yeah. help. Great insight. Because also somebody mentioned squish squishcraft as well, which has yeah. its own art style. But that's also a very programmer yeah. type of and game. like and same like squishcraft like it's very shit posty, and that, that's what <laughs> makes it stand out. Like right. it's this this ties into Murray's previous talk about vibes for sure. Mm -hmm. um, so next one along. So AC Block has asked, do you think a hint system is still necessary in a situation like Baba, where you have a whole lot of different puzzles you can try at any time? Mm, I agree, and that's that was my design philosophy in Bunburrows. But the thing is, I think that a lot of players missed on the more like advanced stuff on Baba Is You, and that's a shame. Mm. Like, it takes so so long to get to the good meta stuff with like the level, the the, the level wor world, and hint system could have helped people like go to the late part of the games and like find that and get the epiphany of finding that out mm -hmm. and like even in in Bumble, I was like going to be hiding like new content 
uh, in a few months. And the thing is, um, if we just release that content, we'll be only getting like five to 10% of players to enjoy it. And we want to bump those numbers before giving that content. So we're going to be delivering like a hint system, etc. Uh, oh, I'm excited. Coming. Maybe it's... I can finally uh, collect some <laughs> of those final bunnies <laughs> that I missed. Um, so uh, next question that we had was from GGIDK Games. Um, oh, this is a broad question. Go ahead. Any, any predictions on the future of meta in puzzle games? I have a a I have a, a self uh, like fulfilling prophecy because uh, I got very invested into Meta myself making Bunburrows, and I couldn't stop buzzing Brett Taylor uh, at GDC about that, and he gave me a concept which gave gave me like an epiphany uh, in real life and. On my side, I'll be working on the concept and like trying to very really, like neatly define what meta mechanics are because like mm. this covers like so many different things that are puzzles, not puzzles, mechanics. Like, and I want to like because because we use the same word for all of these, I want to like neatly define what that is. So on my side, I will be that. Oh. And for what's next, I think that tunic and um, games like tunic uh, did like a lot of babies, like a lot of baby bunnies, I think. And like we'll be seeing like even in non thicky games, like a lot of like these kinds of things. Like, to me, like the, like the two biggest moments of my life with meta content was like Fez back in back in the day, and recently it was tunic. And I think like tunic, it was so influential and so popular. It has to like it. I think it it influenced a lot of people. It's interesting, yeah. Tunic's uh, like aha moments with the meta stuff were amazing, and it's it's, mm. it's it's interesting to wonder if is is that going to be one of like Thinky Games' like biggest influences on other games outside of Thinky Games, like other games mm. adopting meta yeah. style. And like that's what I advocate for. Like, don't just make puzzle games. Like, we can make very puzzly stuff mm -hmm. and give them like the look of not being puzzle games. Like, look at games like Shant of Senor. Like, it's a puzzle game at heart, but yeah. like it doesn't feel like it. Like, mm -hmm. you feel like, oh, I'm deciphering a language. It's an adventure game. And like, like even Outer Wilds, it's a puzzle game. Like, it's, mm -hmm. it's a singing game. It's about investigating and stuff, but it doesn't have the feel of a puzzle game. Absolutely. Awesome. Uh... We might as well. So the next talk after this one is a pre-recorded one, so I can play it any time. So might as well ask another couple of questions if you've got time. Um, sure. All good. Uh, so Dom Camus has asked, I hope I, I haven't missed any. Dom Camus has asked, what proportion of your dev time was spent working on secret content, which only 1% of players saw? Well, the thing is, uh, in our case, like the... Like the levels themselves, I don't think of them as sequent content because like it's just like a regular puzzle, just harder. Mm -hmm. However, uh, for just the whole system, the thing is like Bunburrows, its meta mechanics are very sy systemic. And the thing is like, I did not intend there to be like 700 babies. <laughs> like my estimations were like around 500. But the thing is like the meta content just exists out of the system. Mm -hmm. And so it's not like a matter of like individually designing stuff. And like sometimes it would be like um, me making a level thinking, oh, I can connect it to that other level and like readjust the individual, individual level so that they communicate well with one another. But so I don't have like exact time frames of how much time it took me because it was like, let's so like, it was in the flow of the making the levels. So, and like if you want like a clear cut with like secret levels where when well it's been like since last august where that we've been teasing that final update with what's left after the very end game so i could say like it took it took it took us a year for making secret stuff i guess mm -hmm. <laughs> um and i guess like having the secret stuff there meant that the people who even the people that didn't discover that stuff were they probably ended up picking up the game because the secret stuff was there in the first yeah. place um, and I, I was going to say, it's also extremely thematic that you sort of like lost track of all the babies these bunnies were having. Yeah, like, <laughs> like at some point, like, a, like at some point, like I sometimes I ask the community how to make that one baby again because I can't <laughs> figure it out. Like, That's I'm amazing. not going to write down solutions for 700 of them. So, right, exactly. Uh, okay, there was one last one. I'll so we'll try and get to that from Icely Puzzles, uh, ch Chess Battle Advance. Did I do that right? Uh, I thought there would be a very large bunny god in Bumburrows. Will that be in the end game, please? Uh, 
No, the, <laughs> I, I'm not going to be spoiling the, the, the final content, but there won't be a giant bunny, but there will be some very cool bunnies, like bunnies you have not seen. Interesting. Yes. Oh, <laughs> now we have to keep playing. All right. That was the last question, I think. Thank you so much, Lenafi. Um, Thank you. Feel free to